right. Um, Ezekiel chapter 11. Let us open in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to look into your word, to read what you have for us. Help us to learn and glean from it what you would want us to know. I pray that you would help me to speak your words, your words alone in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. So um, we are moving on. We had the last, we had learned where there was a, um, these, all these visions now, the last several chapters have been, um, Ezekiel was taken in a vision by God. Remember, he lived in Babylon among the captivity, and he was taken in a vision and carried away to Jerusalem to see the temple and the things that were going on there. And then unfortunately, even after all the judgment and everything God brought and the utter destruction and desolation that they live in, they still did not turn to God. They wouldn't listen to Jeremiah, who was a prophet back there with them, or any of the other people that spoke on God's behalf. They would they refused to listen still. Their families were dead. So many people died or were carried off captive. The city was destroyed and left in ruins, and they still will not repent. And we saw how um, God's glory was just slowly but surely completely leaving the temple and everything because he just did not want to be there anymore and, and all their idolatry and just the evil that was going on. God wanted no part of it anymore. So Ezekiel 11 and 1. Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate. This is all still in the temple now, in the area of Jerusalem. In the east gate of the Lord's house that faced the east. And behold, at the door of the gate, 25 men stood there, among whom I saw Jezaniah. We read about him in the last chapter, he was among the people that were worshiping um, the leaders of Israel that were in a secret hidden room of the temple in the dark, making sacrifices to other gods and worshiping them. And he was among them and was supposed to be a leader of the people um, and part of the priesthood to bring the people back to God. And they were leading the people in idol worship. So he was the son of Azur and Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, princes of the people. And God said to me, son of man, these are the men. So Jezaniah and Pelatiah, these are the men that plot trouble and give wicked counsel in this city. Who say, it's not near. Let us build houses. This city is the cauldron and we are the meat. So what he's saying is when they say, it's not near, let us build houses. Because even though Babylon had already invaded Jerusalem, took everyone captive, destroyed everything that we talked about, Jeremiah is still back there and he is still prophesying, saying, if you don't stop, more judgment is going to come and Babylon is going to come back and destroy what you're building. And so Jezaniah and Pelatiah are saying, don't listen to Jeremiah. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Look, the destruction already happened. Okay, we don't have to go back to God. The destruction is oh, whatever happened has already happened. So we can do whatever we want. We were given the land. It belongs to us. We get to still stay here. So screw it all. We're just going to do what we want. Don't listen to Jeremiah. Therefore, prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. And the spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord. This is what you have said, O house of Israel. For I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. You have multiplied your dead in this city. And you have filled the streets with dead bodies. 
Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, your slain, whom you have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh, and this city is the cauldron, and I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. God is like, you think you're just going to live the rest of your days here all fine, and you're not, because I'll carry you captive away. You have feared the sword, I will bring a sword to you, says the Lord God, and I will bring you out of here and deliver you into the hands of foreigners, and I will execute judgment among you. And you will fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. This city shall not be your cauldron, neither will you be the meat in the midst of it, but I will judge you in the borders of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord because you have not walked in my statutes or executed my judgments, but you have done according to the manner of the heathen that are all around you. And it came to pass when I prophesied that Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, died. My God, this man just dropped dead. And then I fell upon my face and I cried with a loud voice. And I said, oh, Lord God, are you going to kill everyone that's left? Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, your brethren, even your brethren, the people in your own family, and all the house of Israel completely are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, get away from the Lord. Unto us this land is given to possess. So what we talked about a couple minutes ago when they said, get away. We don't have to go back to following God. The punishment already came. We get to keep the land. Let's party. We get to do what we want. We're stuck here. We're, we're left here. They didn't take us. We made it. And they thought that's how it was going to be for the rest of their lives. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off, among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of all the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. So this is an answer and response to when Ezekiel was so shocked and devastated because Pelot God killed Pelatiah. And, and Ezekiel was like, are you going to kill everyone that's left? So God is making him a promise and saying, no, that he will have a remnant, that they will live. And those are the people that he will give the land to. Everybody then was running their mouth thinking that they lived and they survived and they didn't die and they weren't taken off to Babylon that we can breathe and do whatever we want now. We're left here in the land. But God said, no, all you people that trust in yourselves and your stupidity and your pride, you think that you got away with it all. No, I'm bringing judgment on you, but I will have a remnant that I will save and I will give them the land. And so he was making a difference for it. Um, verse 18 and they will come here and they will take away all the detestable things and all the abominations from here. And I will give them one heart and I will put one heart means that they're all going to have the same purpose, the same intent, and it's going to be to follow God. Hallelujah. And I will put a new spirit within you and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh that they will walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they will be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose heart is following after their own detestable things 
and their abominations. I will repay what they have done back on them, saith the Lord God. Then did the cherubim lift up their wings and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was over above them. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain on the east side of the city. So now you see that he's left the temple. We saw that before where it was like the glory of God was like inching his way out of the temple. Just the heartbreak and devastation, like having to leave his own home, his own temple that he had his presence had dwelt in all this hundreds and hundreds of years and now he's got to go and he's taking his time and so he left the temple and now he's out of the city standing over the mountain after that the spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the spirit of god back to chaldea to them of the captivity so the vision that i had seen left me so now he's back home, back in Babylon. And remember he had said it was several chapters ago um, that this vision started and that he was sitting in his house and some of the leaders of Judah were sitting there with him, also part of the captivity. And so verse 25 says, Then I told them of the captivity all the things that the Lord had showed to me. We're going to go ahead to chapter 12. The word of the Lord also came to me saying, Son of man, you live in the middle of a rebellious house that have eyes to see and don't see and have ears to hear and do not hear because they are a rebellious house. Therefore, thou son of man, prepare the stuff for removing and remove by day in their sight. So now he's giving them, now he's doing... Um, we've talked about this before where they had things where sometimes Ezekiel had to act things out. And so now God is having him act out, um, having to move and relocate. Excuse me. And, um, and begin your moving in front of them in the daytime. And you shall remove from your house to another in their sight. It may be they will consider, though they are a rebellious house. Thus shall you bring forth your stuff by day in their sight as stuff for moving. You got to move all your stuff and leave. And go forth all the way to the evening in their sight as those that go forth into captivity. So pack up your stuff like, like you had to when you moved to Babylon and you're traveling in captivity and you can only take your bare essentials. Now it's been six years they've been in the captivity. They're building a life for themselves. So he's got more stuff and now he's got to dwindle it back down. Um, bare necessities, essentials that you would take if you could only take your bare essentials, you are being hauled off to captivity. Dig through the wall in front of their sight and carry your stuff out that way. And in their sight, you will carry your stuff on your shoulders and take it out in the twilight and you will cover your face so that you don't see the ground because I have set you to be an example to the house of Israel. A lot of times when they're taken captive, they're blindfolded so they can't see where they're going. And I did it as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff in the daytime like stuff for captivity. In the evening, I dug through the wall with my hand and I moved out my stuff through the hole in the wall and I carried it on my shoulders in front of them. And in the morning, the word of the Lord came to me and said, Son of man, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, asked you, what are you doing? Say to them, thus saith the Lord God, this burden is about the princes of Jerusalem and all the house of Israel that are there. So when God is having him act out this thing of going into captivity and having to move, it's a sign, it's a prophecy for the people back home in Jerusalem. We had just talked about that. They think that they are they made it out. Okay, they think that they're safe. They're, they were left in the land of Egypt. They're still alive. They weren't taken away as slaves. So they're like, okay, we got it good. We can do whatever we want. And that's not the case at all. And so 
God is having Ezekiel act this out. Um, Verse 11, say, I am your sign. Like as I have done, so shall it be done to them. And they will go into captivity. They thought they they were safe, but they're not. And the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulder in the twilight and go forth. They shall dig through the wall to carry stuff out. He will cover his face that he will not see the ground with his eyes. And you're trying to hide yourself and sneak out at twilight so no one sees you. My net also will I spread upon him and he will be taken in a snare. And I will bring him back to Babylon to the land of the Chaldeans. Yet shall he not see it, though he will die there. And we know by, um, if you were with me when we did Jeremiah, this prophecy came to pass because this all happened in about the sixth year of their captivity. It was 11 years that the king of Babylon went back to Jerusalem and recaptured it and hauled off more people because they continued to be in rebellion. And that's exactly what happened. Zedekiah and his princes, princes tried to escape at twilight and run into the out to the field and get away, but they were caught and brought to Babylon. Everything that Ezekiel is saying, that's cool. That we did Jeremiah and now Ezekiel, because you we know that this this did happen, just as Ezekiel prophesied. Verse 14, and I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him and all his bands, and I will draw out the sword after them. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries. Excuse me. But I will leave a few men of them from the sword, from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the heathen where they come, and they will know that I am the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me and said, Son of man, eat your bread with shaking and drink your water with trembling and carefulness. That was another sign that he had to act out in front of the people. And say to the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God about the inhabitants back in Jerusalem. In the land of Israel, they will eat their bread with carefulness and drink water with astonishment that her land may be desolate from all that's in there because of the violence of all those that live in it. And the cities that are lived in will be laid waste and the land will be desolate and you will know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, what is the proverb that you've heard in the land of Israel when they say the days are prolonged and every vision fails? So there was this thing that um, because the prophecies, a prophecy would be given and it would take so long, the people would be like, wouldn't care. Okay, whatever. It's never going to happen. And they would give up. Okay. So because of that, Verse 23, God says, so tell them, thus saith the Lord, I will make this proverb to stop. I'm going to put a stop to this. And they will not use it anymore as a proverb in Israel, but say to them, the days are at hand, the effect of every vision. For there will no be no more vain vision or flattering divination within the house of Israel. Because I am the Lord and I will speak and the word that I will speak will come to pass and it will be not prolonged anymore. In your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word and I will do it, says the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, behold, They of the house of Israel say the vision that he's talking about is for a long time off. It's many days to come. And he prophesies of times that are way far off. Therefore say to them, thus saith the Lord God, there shall not one of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word that I have spoken will be done, saith the Lord God. Hallelujah. I pray for all of us that we will rest in the promises of God 
and that we will not put him to the test and that we will not be a rebellious house. And for all of us that are reading this and going over this right now, anyone who might see this video, I pray for you that God would soften your heart in the name of Jesus Christ and for those that you are praying for, that he would take away our hearts of stone and give us a heart of flesh to do his will and to walk in his ways all the days of our life. Thank you so much and have a great night. Bye-bye.